Hello students. So uh, today we will start with the next um, topic. So we are uh, we will we'll start with the adaptation in terrestrial habitats. So in previous video we have already covered the topics, different topics. So now we will move on with the our chapter that is adaptation in terrestrial habitats. So this video will start with the desert. So there are different type of uh, habitats. First one will start with the desert. So in this in desert there is a scarcity of water and the climate is hot and dry. There is a short rain season followed by the long dry season. So in desert there is a scarcity of scarcity of water. So there is a, it is very dry condition in the desert. So there are some living organisms that have adapted to live in the desert. So there are two common organisms. In, we will study the two common organisms in this habitat. They, that is animal, that is animal and plant. So we will study first one. We will study camel. That and, and another example is that we will study about this cactus. So adaptation in animals. So first one is adaptation in animals. The adaptation like rats and snake which do not have long legs like camel stay in burrows deep in the sand keep away from the intense heat during the day so during the day in the desert the temperature of the, uh, the temperature is very high so in order to in order to stay away from that temperature or prevent from that high temperature these animals like rat and snake they they live in the deep burrows in, inside the sand so this way they will, they will stay away from the heat, intense heat in, during the day. So they, they only come out during the night for their for their uh, activities when it is cooler. So um, we will study first one is we will study about adaptation in camels. So how the camels have adapted to live in the desert? We will study that. Okay, adaptation in a camel. So a camel has long legs long legs which help to keep the upper part of the body away from the heat of the sand on the ground so the camels have camel they have very long legs so that they will be away from the hot sand okay so they will give, so this will help the camel to stay away from the hot sand on the ground so next adaptation the camel has is after drinking water once it it can live for many days without water so uh, camels can live for many days without drinking. So one, once it drink water, it can it can live for many days without water. A camel excrete a small amount of urine, and it, and its dung is dry. So camel, so the excretory system is also adapted. The excretory system of camel is also adapted to live live in the desert. So they they excrete small amount of urine so they don't need to urinate frequently so and another adaptation is their dung is also dry and another adaptation of camel is a camel does not sweat so camel does the skin of a camel is also adapted for the for living in the desert so next adaptation is its feet have thick pads which protect it from the hot desert sand so the feet of the camel is also adapted to walk on the sand, hot sand. So the feet of the camel is also adapted. So they have thick pads which protect them from hot sand. Next adaptation is a camel has long eyelashes which help to prevent sand from reaching its eye during a sandstorm. So the eye of the camel is also adapted. So they have very long eyelashes so which protect or which prevent the uh, sand from getting inside the eye of the camel during the sandstorm. So next, next adaptation is a camel can close its nostrils so that sand does not enter respiratory system during the sandstorm. So during the in the desert, the sandstorm is frequent. So during the sandstorm, what happens is this camel can close their nostrils so that the sand does not get inside their respiratory system so this is this is this is also one of the adaptation in the camel and next one is fat stored in its hump act as a food reserve so that means in desert there are there is a shortage of food also so what are this fat is stored in, in the hump of its 
in, in the hump, so in the hump fat is stored, so that fat is it can act as a reserve food. So that means that cattle can go without eating for many days. So this is also one important one of the important adaptation in cattle. So next one we will study adaptation in plants. So we have already covered adaptation in animals. So there are I uh, I give you example of a cattle. So now we will study how the plants are adapted to live in the hot desertic uh, environment. Okay. As first one, leaves are either absent, very small or reduced to spines. So the leaves, uh, the leaves of the desert plants, uh, they are reduced or they don't have leaves. So they, their leaves are reduced or they are transformed into spines. So this helps to reduce water loss through transpiration. So we know that the plant trans plant lose their water through transpiration in in plants through the leaves water will escape from the plant so but in the desertic plants they have their leaves are turned are they are reduced to spines so that the transpiration is reduced in them and the there is very loss in the very least amount of water is lost in them. The next one is stem is green and it prepares food for the plant photosynthesis thus occurs in stem so stem of uh, leaves are reduced in the plant so stem is adapted for the photosynthesis so instead of instead of uh, leaf the in stem photosynthesis occurs so in in the desertic plants photosynthesis occurs in the stem instead of leaves and next one adaptation is stem becomes spongy to store water so we know the example of cactus so this their stem has become spongy to store the water. So next one is stem is covered with a thick waxy layer. This helps in retaining water inside the plant body. So a desertic plant, their, their leaves are covered with the waxy layer so that this waxy layer will protect or it retain water inside the plant body. So it will this waxy layer will prevent the transpiration rate in the desertic plant. Next one is next very important adaptation in desertic plant is root system. So root system goes deep into the soil for absorbing water. So in the case in the case of in the case of desertic plant, the root system is very much well developed. So that means the root system they go deep into the soil so that so that what happens is they can absorb water from deep under the soil. Okay, we'll study the example of adaptation in cactus so we will study in the uh, we will study the adaptation in cactus so in plural we call it cacti so leaves are reduced to spines so, you, so every, everyone has seen the cactus so their leaves are reduced to spines they are thorns so instead of leaves these uh, cactus they are spines or thorns next adaptation is stem is green and spongy stem is green and spongy so we know that the green part of the cactus that is stem. So green part of the stem is uh, green part of the cactus is stem. So that cat that that stem is spongy so that it can store water. So the function of that spongy stem is it it stores the water. Next one is roots are very long and reach the deep layers on the soil. So the next adaptation in cactus is their roots are very long and they reach deep layers of the soil so they can they can get the water efficiently from the under the soil okay so in next adaptation next habitat is mountain so we have already studied different habitats in the previous video so this next habitat is mountains so first one we did that is desert now next one we are doing we are seeing the mountains Okay, so in the mountain, the weather is very cold and windy. The ground is covered with snow. These conditions make it difficult for plants to grow and for animals to move around and find food. So we know the we know the habitat. So we know the how mountains are. So in the mountains, it is cold and windy. So weather in the mountain is cold and windy. So that ground in majority of the mountain the ground are covered with snow so now 
we will study about different adaptation how plants are adapted in, in the mountain how plants and animals are adapted in the mountains so first one we will cover plant okay, for most mountain plants grow close to the ground avoid being uprooted by strong and frequent winds so in mountain most plants are they are they are they grow close to the ground so that they are not so they are not uh, they are prevented from being uprooted by strong and frequent winds the trees are normally cone shaped with sloping branches leaves on some, leaves of some plants are middle shaped so we know that the example of conifer trees so pine trees they they don't have leaves like other plants so, so that way what happens is less in the mountain when the snow when there is a snowfall less snows are less snow are trapped on the trees so that way the trees will survive during the cold winters also so next uh, we will study we will cover animals so we will cover adaptation in and animals yak snow leopard so snow leopard they are found in mountain so yak snow leopard penguin and polar bear so are some example of animals which are adapted to live in uh, mountain or in the cold weather so we know that yak and yak snow leopard penguin and polar bear so they are covered with the they are covered in a thick fur so their skins are covered in a thick fur so that they will they will be able to survive in the cold weather also so they, are, they have fat another adaptation is the fat is stored under the skin of these animals so that they will be able to survive in the cold weather where they cannot find food easily so that way they will be able to survive in the cold weather or in the mountains okay next habitat we will cover is grassland and forest so in the grassland and forest so we will cover how how plants and animals have adapted in the grassland and forest so in the grassland mainly grasses herbs are found so mainly in grassland mainly grasses are found so very few shrubs, shrubs and trees are also seen so very few shrubs and trees are seen grassland have hot hot dry summer with low water availability so in the grassland there is hot summer but less water so there is less rainfall in the grassland in tropical region on the other hand have plenty of rainfall throughout the year giving rise to growth of forest so in, but in case of rainforest or tropical region tropical region there is plenty of rainfall throughout the year so that so that it, may, it becomes possible for the trees or the forest to grow so in tropical forest due to abundant rainfall trees are found in large numbers shrubs and herbs are also present so in the tropical forest there is abundant rainfall so because of this it is possible for the trees and others, other plants to grow in abundance so large number of animals are also found in, in this forest lion and deer are two animals which are found both in grassland and, and forest so in the grassland and forest large, large number of animals are also living so some of the animals some of the example of some animal is lion and deer so these are found both in grassland as well as in forest a lion is an animal that obtains its food by killing other smaller animals like deer so a lion will kill small animals for its food or for, for its uh, for its food it kills small animals like deer lion is a carnivore and deer is a herbivore so we know that lion is a carnivore and deer is herbivore in this case the lion is predator and deer is deer is its prey so in this case lion is a predator so predators are those animals which kill other other small animals for their food so the in this case lion is a predator so predator is a large in size and it kills the its prey so in this case prey is a deer so prey are those animals which is killed or is eaten by the its predator okay we will we'll see the adaptation in lion for example so we will study in the uh, we studied adaptation in an animal so it is a lion is a predator i have already told uh, eyes, eyes face forward that is eyes are in the front of the face 
This means that the field of view of its its partly overlaps its eye partly overlaps the field of view of the other eye. That means uh, the eye is the eye is present at the front front portion of the head of the lion. So that means it can see or it can judge the distance. It can judge the distance correctly. So because of the placement or the because of this placement of the eye in the in this lion, it has, it makes possible for the lion to judge the distance properly. It has a second adaptation is it has sharp teeth and long claws on its front legs. So it has sharp teeth and long claws on its front legs. This helps it to grab and stab the prey. So you know, lions have long long teeth and and uh, long claws on its front legs. So this helps to tear the flesh and as well as grab the or stab the prey. So next adaptation is its light brown color helps it to hide in dry grassland where it hunts for its prey. So grassland, the color of the grassland and the color of this lion they help it to hide it from its prey. So from hide it from its prey so it, it can hunt easily. So these are the different adaptations in the animal. So next adaptation we will study is that is in the deer. So adaptation in deer. So in this case a deer is free. So first adaptation body or body color is such that it can bend into the surrounding thus avoiding, avoid, avoiding being caught by the predator. So in, in the in first adaptation the color of the, the color body color of the deer is such that it can hide in the surrounding easily. It can hide in the surrounding easily, so it, it, it uh, does avoid. So it avoids from being caught by the adapter uh, predators. Okay, it has long ear to hear and recognize the movement of the predator. So the ear of the deer are they are long. Okay, so it, because of this this type of ear, it is easy for the deer to hear the movement of predators. Next adaptation is eyes are pre present on the side of the head so that it can look in all directions. So the uh, eyes in the deer is present on the side of its head so that it can look in all the directions. So it can look uh, it can look easily from where the predator is coming or hiding. Uh, this helps it to escape danger. So because of this. Uh, uh, position of the eye in the deer, it, it makes easy, it makes easier for the deer to escape its danger. So it can run very fast. So next adaptation is it can run very fast. This help, helps the deer to run away from the predator. So next adaptation is it can run very fast. So it is important adaptation. The deer run very fast in order to escape from their predator. Okay, so we have uh, covered different habitats and. Uh, adaptation of plants and animals in these different habitats. So we will continue in the next video.